Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to this review of the Next Torch K3 flashlight. A nice pen light, a beautiful, attractive pen light. Uh, good for EDC, gonna be really comfortable in hand, We're carrying around in your pants pocket or your jacket pocket or whatever. Uh, this is gonna be a really nice EDC flashlight. There is one huge flaw with this design, however, and I will address that throughout the course of this review, so stick around for it. Also, during this review, we're also going to show you a good drop test of this flashlight. Did it survive? We're also going to show you a good little, not quite a dunk test, but definitely a water test. We're going to see how it survived that as well. In addition, and of course, we're going to show you how this looks um, shining outside, trying to identify some objects at a, a distance, and also just kind of giving you a good look at what that uh, spot looks like, you know, what the beam looks like. We're going to get to all of that during the course of this review, so stick around. I think you're going to appreciate it and like it. All right, but let's first just kind of talk about what we see here in, the, in this design and some of the, the uh, basic features of it. Well, the first thing you want to know is accessing the battery compartment is just like this. You just kind of twist off the head. You've got two batteries in there, two AAA batteries in there, and that's what the flashlight takes. And uh, the body without batteries is ridiculously light, like feather light. So it's, uh, it's about as sleek and about as small and about as simple as I can imagine it being. You do see a little O-ring on there, which is gonna, like I said, help you prevent uh, this light from getting water in it. But once again, we're gonna talk more about the, uh, the water test here in a little while, so stick around for that. Uh, we've also got a wire pocket clip on here, which kind of wraps around the, uh, the tail there and seems to be one solid piece of wire with this little covering on it. Uh, seems to be. Remember that, because I'm going to address that a little more in a moment. And then here's your clicker, and that looks like it's metallic, if not metal, but uh, it could be like a little chrome-plated plastic or something like that. I can't really tell, honestly. The price is pretty good on this as well, and look down in the description. I'll have a link uh, to, this, to this flashlight and uh, probably one of the better prices you can get it for. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested in it. Now, before we show you all the testing footage and all that stuff, let's talk about the one big flaw that I found in this design. And it's kind of hard to say there's much of a flaw going on here because once again, it's beautiful. Look at the rounded head on there. So cool looking, right? We've got a little bit of an orange peel texture to the reflector inside of there. Man, so many features on this that just scream perfection. It's not super grippy, it's kind of slick. Um, and if that's an issue for you, then that could be the issue, but that isn't the issue I found. The one issue I found with this light is that pocket clip. Once again, I said it seems to be one solid piece of wire. Of course it's not one solid piece of wire. How would that be created? It's welded together at some point. And where it is welded is the problem. What they decided to do is put this little plate on here. You can see a little Next Torch logo on this little plate. That plate is actually hiding, and we'll scoot this down, it's actually hiding the weld. You can see it right here. See that? So that is where the, two, the wire is joined up and made a loop. And they kind of hid that um, unsightly feature with this little plate right here. Now. I don't know that they're, you know, they intended to, you know, put it there so that they could hide the weld. Maybe they did, but it's also meant there, meant to sort of snug up that wire so that as it wraps around the tail, it holds it on. And in fact, you can push this all the way down, and then you can force that wire off. But you kind of run into some problems there because here's the deal: I bent this pocket clip out as I do with almost all my flashlight pocket clips. I bent it out, wanted wanted to bend it back in. So I slid this down, I popped that thing off with some effort, and then I bent it back. But where do you think it bent? <laughs> it didn't bend in some spot like this or that or wherever where it might actually be strong. No, it bent on the weld, the weakest point. Of course it bent on the weld. And because of that, 
the well became even weaker. And now I just cannot get all the tension I want from this pocket clip, no matter how hard I try. It's still there a little bit. You can see that it doesn't completely connect. I think you can see that, maybe not. It doesn't totally connect with the body of the light anymore. But you can hang that off your pocket, your uh, your pocket, or some other you know jacket pocket or something, and it'll be fine. Uh, just that's the one flaw, the one big downside I found with this light is that pocket clip. Um, I think that it pro they probably would have been better off if they'd just gone with a solid piece of metal somehow, or found some other way. I mean, they're the engineers, not me, but maybe they would have found some other way to you know strengthen that or reinforce that so that that weld wouldn't become a weak spot. <music> Moving on, let's talk about the water test. Now the water test, this is not uh, designed to be waterproof, it's advertised as water resistant. In fact, on their, um, on their cover right here, or their case, I should say, a box, they have right here, IPX4 water resistance. And they got some rain coming down on it. So I figured I'd go ahead and try to emulate that by pouring a couple bottles of water across the top of this flashlight. So that was what, maybe 32 ounces total, two 16 ounce bottles I think it was, and just kind of slowly poured it across, making sure to get plenty inside the cracks if they would go. Um, the water just seemed to beat off and roll away and not accumulate or seep in or anything like that um, anywhere on the light. So I gotta say, this is definitely as water resistant as they claim it is, perhaps much, much more. I don't know, I think you could probably dunk this in water and it'd probably be okay for a short amount of time. So um, as far as the water test is concerned, I'd say this flashlight passed with flying colors and that's good to see. We also did a drop test on it. I wanted to see how it would do, whether it would stay running, whether anything would break, whether the glass would shatter, whether, you know, how the finish would hold up, etc. to some drops. So we dropped it from around waist height, did that about five times on concrete. And do we see any damage to it? It's kind of hard to find any damage, actually. There might be some scuffs here and there that we can look at and, and point out, but it's, it's difficult to find any real damage uh, to the flashlight. There's just nothing sticking out, poking out very much. Maybe a little bit there on the tail now that I look for it. But there's not a whole lot of sharp edges on this. It's all pretty smooth, so there's nothing really, you know, to be scratched or, or terribly destroyed. And that's, that's nice to see. I'm glad that... It's, it's built in a way that it can stand up to drops, not only um, cosmetically, but also functionally. Nothing went wrong with it. So it passed the drop test and it passed the water test, no problem. I know you wanna see what this looks like outside, so let's go ahead and skip to the outdoor portion of this review and show you what all that stuff looks like. All right, let's go ahead and show you the different modes on the K3 and in the process, give you a look at what that beam looks like. So here we are starting off in high at 180 lumens, or that's what it's uh, advertised as, and I really do like that beam for an everyday carry light. It's very, very broad, covers a lot of area. It's gonna be super useful and utilitarian. I like it. Now to get down to the lower modes, now this does have a memory function on it, it appears to, where if I have it in a certain mode for an extended period of time, maybe five to 10 seconds or more, then it will remember that. And when I go to reach for it again, after however many seconds, it'll come right back to that same mode. Now to get to a, a lower mode, what I want to do is turn it off, do a half press. Now it comes up to high, half press again, it brings it down to medium. Now this would be about 70 lumens or that's what it's advertised at. And once again, if I keep it here in medium for a little while, turn it off, and then I think I might need my light again, turn it on, it should come right back to medium. So if I want to move it down to low at this point, I would turn it off, do a half press, and then click and now we are in low at 25 lumens. So that's basically how you get through the different modes. And uh, there's one more mode also, it's the uh, strobe mode. So I turn this off, and again, the memory function, so if I come back to it, there I am in low again. But if I turn it off, half press, low, and then press again, now I'm in strobe. And strobe is rated or advertised to be 180 lumens and I don't know how long that would last, but there it is. And we switch that off, and I don't think it has a memory function for strobe. It won't come right back to strobe, and we'll test that. Uh, I was wrong. It does have a memory function for strobe, so it'll come right back to that as well. So I switch that off, press, 
and then click and it goes back to high. So it seems to have a memory function for each mode and uh, that's basically what those mo modes look like, what they, what they are, and I gotta say that beam looks really nice. What I wanna do now is test out the K3 for throw. See how it does trying to pick up an object at about 25 yards out. And I think that's the most you can ask of a flashlight like this one. So we're gonna start off in low mode, see if we can spot anything out there. Right now I'm sending it straight out to the camp chair that I have out in the distance, once again at about 25 yards, and I'm not seeing anything. Either with my naked eyes, just barely picking up something with my naked eyes, but the viewfinder, I don't think it's spotting it at all. So from there, we're going to go up to medium and see if we can see anything. Now I can spot it. Uh, with my eyes, I can spot that. I don't know if you can see it in camera or not yet, but it is there and I'm able to look at it. I can see it pretty clearly. So we're going to go ahead and move up to the high mode from here and see how that looks and now it's finally appearing on camera pretty clearly there it is in the center of the screen a little green and silver camp chair and uh, once again if i'm let's say lost and looking around for uh, my campsite and i spot that chair it gives me a little hope that i'm going to make make it through the night and be okay so i'd say at about 25 yards uh, being able to pick up large-ish items that have some pretty distinguishing details. That's something you can definitely ask of this light. Out beyond that, you know, 30, 40 yards might be pushing it. 50 yards would definitely be very difficult. In fact, I tried that before, had to bring it into 25 in order to see it. So 25, 30-ish probably is the best or, that this light can do for picking up objects like that. But it's nice to see that it can do it. Closing thoughts, I think the next torch K3 is a very good EDC pen light. It's a little bit longer than some other ones I'm familiar with. There's the uh, 4.7s Prion 2 series. You can see that's quite a bit shorter. Um, I've had some issues with their pocket clip as well. I just wish it had a little more spring tension to it or, or that it was made of spring steel, I should say. But And also I had to put a different clicky tail cap on there to get it to uh, where I liked it. But it is quite a bit smaller, so it's a smaller package and uh, fits in your pocket a little easier, you might say. But I do think the K3 is sleeker looking, better looking overall. Um, the length, the size of it hasn't really been an issue for me in any of the pants pockets that I've worn. And so maybe that's not a big deal. And of course the deep carry pocket clip is really cool. I wish it was a bit more durable. I don't know how they can re-engineer that to make it better, but uh, perhaps on the K4 or whatever, model comes out after this one maybe they can find some way to you know create a new version of that pocket clip that's a little bit tougher in any case i gotta say that the k3 is a very nice flashlight it's held up to all the tests that i put it through thanks of course to next torch for sending me this light to review and thanks to all you guys for sitting down and watching this review i'm a boy scout we'll see you guys on the next one next torch did send me this light but uh, before they did, I made sure to check it out and decide if this was something really interesting or not. Because if it doesn't have something special about it, I just assume not waste my time on it. However, I found some pretty interesting features here that uh, definitely impressed. So we're going to get to those in a second.